Okay, here's a look at Transformers Masterpiece Beast Wars MP59 Rhinox by Takata Tomy. It's a long life design. Here's a look at the front of the box with the product image of robot mode and beast mode. Back of the box, you get product images that we've seen already, but here you could see these are all the accessories that it comes with. And then some features for the front and back, the beast mode with the other two masterpiece figures that we got already, the AllSpark alternate face, the option to have Optimus Primal riding Rhinox, one of uh, his um, accessories here, the extractor device, and here's uh, his handgun. One of them comes inside the beast mode, but he actually comes with two. And then some words and stuff in Japanese. That's probably the bio, but I forgot how to read the Japanese. Side of the box, you get an image of the robot mode with that extractor device. The other side, the beast mode with his mouth open. Top of the box, Transformers Masterpiece logo. Bottom, words and stuff in Japanese. So that is a look at the box. And now here is a look at the figure. But first, let's go over all the accessories that it comes with again. So here you could see you get uh, two of his guns, uh, which are really nicely uh, sculpted and painted. Uh, these are really nice. And these are um, specific to each hand. So you look at the handle, you see there's a tab. So it goes on this side. And this one has a tab on the other side. And this one is the side that um, does come inside the uh, chest here in beast mode. But I've already taken it out. So just pointing that out. And then we got his uh, extractor device from that episode. And you could see this is uh, really nicely sculpted and painted. Uh, a lot of nice uh, attention to detail here. And then we get the AllSpark, which this is really, really cool. The nice transparent uh, blue plastic with the white paint for like the electricity or something. And this actually does um, open up so you can actually hold it. But it does uh, open up here and you could see there's uh, the spark, uh, which looks like a metallic blackberry. But yeah, that's a really nice attention to detail because it's a metallic paint. It actually causes some reflections through the transparent uh, blue plastic. So yeah, that's a nice attention to detail there. And then we do get a alternate uh, faceplate and this adapter for Optimus Primal. <laughs> so he could be riding Rhinox. So those are the accessories. And then you get uh, the bio card, which is my favorite. So this is really nice. And then the instructions, which does not come in the booklet style. It comes in this big open up sheet, but let, let's see if I can do this uh, one by one. So you could see you got uh, some nice colored images of um, just the stuff we already seen on the box. And then here, this is the handgun and um, you could see how this one has the handle that folds down and then the device here, the extractor device. And then we have the uh, all spark here, which is really cool. You could see how that works. And uh, then you have to open this whole thing up here, which is really bad, uh, but you could see see where's the features here let's do it this way so you could see here um, the schematic drawing of uh, Rhinox and all the accessories and then here the uh, features the mouth opens the head pulls out and you can articulate the head and then this feature to have Optimus Primal riding on there so this here you could see how this is supposed to work because I could tell you that uh, this does not really work uh, all that well, but you'll see that later. And then uh, just uh, the transformation, which again, the reason why I'm showing this is just to make my point clear that 
This uh, is not really a good way to make the instructions. This fold up sheet should be done in a booklet style, but that's everything that you get. And now let's uh, take a closer look at the figure. And you could see, first of all, this is a really nicely sculpted uh, figure. You could see, um, yeah, they really captured the uh, tune aesthetics and kind of like the realistic look because yeah you could see all the nice curves and stuff i used to do animal drawings when i was studying animation so yeah i'm very familiar with the way the rhinos should look but yeah you could see it's a good quality plastic nicely painted and also the way they handled the texture to resemble that of a, a real rhino so it's done really nice so now let's take a closer look at the head Look at those eyes look at the nice uh, horns that's nicely sculpted and painted the little nostrils here let's see his mouth does open up and you could see nicely sculpted detail here the teeth the tongue and it's painted up here you could see it's nice and gold uh, for robot mode the ears you could see are on a ball joint so you get a lot of articulation here give some character to uh, the figure and his eyes and actually you can pull this forward and then you get articulation for the head but you need to do that to be able to pull open his cheek you can't really see but there is a little bar here which you can use to uh, <laughs> articulate his eyes so that's uh, kind of cool you could put that back push that back and then come down here to his legs on the front. You could see it does articulate back, but that's about it. No extra um, articulation here. Uh, but the back, you could see it does uh, come forward and back, but that's it. Um, you can get some interesting poses, kind of like him sitting down or something. And the back here, that feature that they showed you, it's basically a articulated tail, which goes up. And I guess you can use it with the legs coming down. So it's something like that, if you wanted to do that. Uh, so yeah, you get um, just uh, a decent amount of articulation, I think for the Rhino. But yeah, this is uh, really cool. So now let's uh, do some comparisons so here is optimus primal so you could see how these two guys uh look and scale next to each other already this is giving me the feeling like uh these guys just uh step right out of the cartoon and uh let's bring out uh cheetor and you could see yeah these guys again it's starting to look more like they these guys just stepped right out of the cartoon and uh another character let's bring out uh dino bot here this guy's pretty big uh so we're gonna have to make some room here so let's move this here let's put uh dino bot back here so you can see what uh this looks like it's already looking really really cool like these guys just stepped right out of the cartoon and uh there is another uh masterpiece figure that we got which is uh tigatron so here let's come back a little bit and see if we could put them in here get a nice little group shot of these guys in beast mode and yeah uh as far as maximals go um what are we missing we're missing a uh, rat trap air razor and my favorite uh, Beast Wars character, which is uh, Silver Bolt. But that's going to be a third party. Uh, but let me bring this guy out because uh, we do have Rat Trap, Rat Trap from Generations. And he actually scales pretty good um, with the Masterpiece figure. So let's put this uh, aside here and see what this looks like. So yeah, um, this is probably the best... Uh, group shot that I can get here of all these guys because these guys are actually pretty big so yeah this looks uh really cool looks like these guys just stepped right out of the cartoon so now 
Let's see if we can go over one of the features here in uh, beast mode. And yeah, I already said this doesn't work out so well, but here you just want to pull out this piece and you want to be careful not to lose it because it just uh, comes out it's a small little piece. And then we have this adapter and let me see if I can show you this as best as I can. But first you have to spread his legs out wide enough to be able to sit on top of here. And uh, if you see, there's a little hole back here, which is for the uh, tab in, in here. Where is it? Right here. But you have to get yourself orientated. So first of all, this little rectangle piece, uh, this is what attaches here. So now you know what direction this is supposed to go. And then you find the uh, tab and the slot and you just stick it in there like so. And it could be a little tricky because this belly here, it should have been maybe a little bit smaller. So you just kind of have to make sure that you get that in there and make sure you keep this closed as best as you can because this is one of the tolerance issues with this uh, adapter. And like I said, it's, um, yeah, this, uh, this wasn't <laughs> done all that well, but you can see you get it in. And then to put it on, uh, you could see the little square shape supposed to go in there. And uh, I'm doing it from the back because you can see the difficulty here because the legs are kind of in the way. So you kind of have to spread the legs out wide enough just to get this in here. And it doesn't really stay that well. Uh, this is something that they should have um, fixed because it's uh, this does not work all that well. And I just want to point out this to the contour. You need to make sure that his uh, contour here fits this little um, contour down here as best as you can while making sure the legs are spread apart uh, wide enough for this to sit on there. But once you get it on there, then you can just pose this however you want. And his head does uh, come up. So you get good articulation there. And now we have Optimus Primal riding uh, Rhinox from that scene in the episode. But uh, he is missing a rat trap. But here with rat trap, you can kind of tweak this a little bit and kind of see if you can get rat trap in there. Just kind of use his feet to kind of hold in there. Um, let's see. I want to get this so you can see what this looks like. Because uh, once you can get it in there, get it somehow fastened up um yeah it does uh it does look kind of cool get his head facing down get him reposed here as best as i can um yeah this is uh it's actually not meant to be doing all of this but you can get him on there and just fake it till you make it and you could see what this looks like so yeah now <laughs> You can kind of replicate that scene from the cartoon. This actually <laughs> looks good, cool for a display if you can get this guy staying on here. Um, so yeah, that's a, a nice little feature. But like I said, it yeah, this um, doesn't really work out so well. But uh, I just thought I'd show you that because it, um, it does look nice when you get them all put up together like that. But um, yeah, that's a look at uh, Rhinox in uh, is uh, beast mode. And I didn't bring out my original or the War for Cybertron, but I'll just say I'm glad I did not buy the Beast Wars Versus and stuck to my guns because clearly this one is definitely better than the Rhinox from the Beast Wars Versus. So I'm really happy with this. So now let's uh, transform this into his... Uh, robot mode and take a look at that rhinox maximize
Okay, here's a look at Rhinox in robot mode. And first, let me just say that this truly is a fantastic figure. This is definitely going to be in the top 10 figures for 2024. Um, just transforming this from the beast mode to robot mode, uh, I clearly noticed that they uh, definitely did a fantastic job in um, designing the way the parts um, you know fold up and rotate um, to just go into the positions where they need to be this is designed really well and when you also look at the quality of the plastic how well it's painted all the attention to all the details they really put a, a lot of effort to make this uh, a masterpiece truly worthy of the name masterpiece because i'm telling you this is really a, a fantastic figure so uh let's take a closer look at all the details so first uh let's take a closer look at that head and you could see it's a very nicely sculpted head nicely painted very tune accurate with the nice uh maximal tattoos on his head the only thing, um, nitpicky thing, is that this does not have that light feature like uh, some of the other uh, Beast Wars figures they gave us. But I will say that, um, yeah, they, they don't, it doesn't need the light feature because Takata doesn't seem to do a good job with uh, the electronics because the batteries uh, for the other figures ran out. But you could see the head. This is really nice. Um, and the articulation, it is on a ball joint, so it can go up, down, rotate side to side, all around. <laughs> really nice. And look at the shoulders, how nicely sculpted that is. Um, and it is on a nice ratchet going forward and back. And also the arms here, they can go out on a ratchet. And uh, you do get um, weight, um, bicep swivel. And you do get a nice ratchet for the elbow joint as well. And uh, his nicely sculpted, detailed hands with the joints here. Um, the thumb does uh, rotate up and down and it does open. On, and the fingers here, one of the fingers can open independently. The other two are grouped together. But uh, that's a good amount of articulation for the hand no waist rotation obviously because of the design of the character and no ab crunch but the legs look at listen to that that's a nice ratchet going forward and back and a nice ratchet also going out to the side and the knee also on a nice ratchet um and this is the only uh maybe downside here is uh there's no ratchet for the feet and you could see it is on a pin, but this is important to point out. Look at the how thick that pin is. This is about maybe six or seven millimeters, or actually maybe seven or eight. So they use the thick pin here, which is good enough to hold it, but yeah, it's not as strong as the ratchets, the generous ratchets that they gave you, but it still holds up. So you do get ankle tilt and you can uh, maneuver this to get a little bit toll tilt up and down and individual um, toll tilt down here so yeah this is a, a good amount of articulation and like i already pointed out the ratchets is what's uh, very surprising here they were generous with the ratchets here um, this is done really well so now let's uh, go over some of the accessories that it comes with so first let's um go over his uh guns here and uh these are um uh specific to each side so look at the handle has the tab so you know that um they only go on certain hands and only one of them which is this side is the one that can fold down to store inside his chest in uh, beast mode but the other side um, doesn't fold down but these are site specific and let's go ahead and put this in since uh, he did appear in the cartoon blasting away uh, his guns so you could see what this looks like you just 
open up his hand, find the tab in the slot, line it up, tab it in, and then wrap his uh, hand around there. You can see what that looks like. And then do the same on this side. Just open this up just enough to get the tab in here, which is kind of hard if you don't see the tab first, but find the tab in the slot, uh, line it up and uh, tab it in and then close up his hand. And now you could see what this looks like, kind of like in the cartoon. And uh, yeah, that's all my bad. But I'm just uh, not doing a careful job putting this on because it's always difficult doing this on camera, uh, trying to capture this while also paying attention to what you're doing. But if you get it in there, it does hold in really well. And you could now see what this looks like. And I'll just point out another little nitpicky thing I have is uh, it would have been nice, <laughs> more nice, if they gave you like a little spring gimmick so that it can spin. But this already spins uh, well enough. So you could see this is really cool. And I think it would have been cool if they gave you some lights or maybe those uh, transparent blast effects. But now I'm being really uh, greedy. I'm really with the, all my nitpicking, but just letting you know what that looks like. And these work really well. And just go over the details again. I mean, look at, look at how nicely sculpted this is. All the attention to the details, even the... Uh, um, the details here are for the wood part of the handle. Yeah, this is done really, really nice. So that's a look at his handguns. And then there's a, I don't know what you call this, but this is that extractor uh, that was used in the episode where he was uh, getting Optimus out from Stonehenge. So here you just basically open up the handle and there is a tab in there so let's do this a little carefully now you just have to find the tab and the slot line it up tab it in give it a good squeeze and then we could close the handle here and secure that and now we have a rhinox here with this extractor and look at this look at how nicely sculpted this is with the paint finish Again, they really put a 100% effort into making this uh, a high quality masterpiece figure. So that's a, a look at the extractor. And then of course we have the, uh, um, the AllSpark. Look at this. Look at the way they handled this too. It's not just the transparent uh, blue, which is nice with the extra sculpted and painted detail for like the uh, uh, I don't know what you call that, the uh, lightning or something, but uh, the way they handled the details here, this uh, metallic uh, blackberry, this is really smart. I mean, look at, they used the metallic uh, paint, uh, which helps to uh, give some reflection. So this uh, um, displays much better. This is done really, really nice. And I'm not sure if it's meant to do this, uh, but uh, there is a tab and you could see a slot on his hand and you just carefully get it in there, wrap the fingers around. Now he looks like he's holding a bowling ball getting ready to bowl. But yeah, this is where maybe it would have been nice to have some butterfly joints. But again, just the character design, I mean, it just doesn't allow for... Uh, butterfly joints and you don't want to be forcing a butterfly joint here compromising the integrity of the figure causing it to be loose and you know using weak plastic and breakage if you know what I'm talking about but yeah you could see what that looks like so yeah I mean you can get a lot of great um, pictures out of um, this figure with all these accessories uh, so this is really nice and the one last thing for uh, robot mode is that they did give you a alternate uh, faceplate. And actually, I, I already swapped it out. This one has his mouth a little bit open. 
and this is the I think the closed one and to simply swap that out you just grab uh, the gold part of his uh, uh, jaw give it a good squeeze and grab the front and pull it out and I wanted to show you this this is kind of funny but you can see what he looks like without his uh, face they did a nice job sculpting in the teeth and uh, yeah I forgot which one it was but I guess you can see the comparison between the two here so this one you could see it's kind of like an M shape and I think this was the one that came with the figure so let's put this back and you could see what he looks like now he has his uh, closed mouth so yeah that's a look at um, all the features uh, accessories that you get and so now let's uh, compare this with some of the other um, Beast Wars masterpiece Beast Wars figures that uh, Takata gave us so first let's um, bring out Optimus Primal and here we can get a nice uh, comparison and scale you could see they did a really nice job I mean look at this this just I mean man this is really fantastic um, so you could see all around what these two guys look like and let's bring out um, Cheetor so now we could see what uh, Cheetor looks like here get a nice group shot going here you could see what this looks like they scale really nice together and then let's bring out a uh, Dinobot here and you could see yeah he's a bigger figure and you could see what this looks like together how they all scale looks really nice it's all very tune accurate and then uh let's bring out tigertron here uh let's move these guys back and you can see what he looks like here with these guys and uh yeah this is uh looking really really nice this truly deserves a, you know its own shelf here and um now we are just missing um or well, a few characters we're missing air razor missing rat trap but here this is the generations which interestingly <laughs> this actually scales really well with the masterpiece it's just um not masterpiece quality because you could see his feet is missing the needed uh ankle tilts here that's why he has a little difficulty standing because you can't uh, get his feet to be flat but you can uh, fake it till you make it and then you could see this looks oh man this is fantastic this looks really awesome just uh you know that uh they're gonna do it give us the other figures it's just um when perfect example is like the live action movie after how many years do we just finally complete it with the the brawl but um yeah, same thing I, I anticipate is going to happen here. We're going to get the other ones. It's just going to take a while. But yeah, you could see what this looks like. Just missing Air Razor. And thankfully, I don't know the name of the company, but it's that third party company is also giving us a, a Silver Bolt, which uh, I am going to get that one because, uh, yeah, just Silver Bolt's actually my favorite Peace Wars character. And yeah, you could see yeah, how that's going to look. But yeah, I just wanted to do this just to uh, give you a group shot of what this is like. Look at this. This is fantastic. Uh, this needs a whole shelf on its own. But anyways, um, just wanted to show you that and um, just let you know again, as far as this figure goes, I'm going to say it one more time. This is truly a fantastic figure. Definitely. Um, a masterpiece uh, figure very you know the quality um, the the how much effort they put into making this a really great figure just again reiterating all the nice generous ratchets throughout the figure except for the ankles all the attention to the sculpted detail which I don't think I said but you know sculpting this is really really hard especially when it's throughout the figure and you could see how nicely painted it is so yeah I'm just 
you know, letting you know that um, this really is a great figure. And um, I don't give recommendations because if you want it, you'll get it. Uh, if you don't, you won't. But I will tell you, <laughs> because this really is a great figure, I am going to recommend this uh, because I'm very sure that uh, anyone who gets this is going to love this figure. And in terms of rating, which I normally don't do, I am going to give this a rating of a 9.8 out of 10. And that's just because, man, if they only gave us little ratchets here, that would have been nice. And again, the little nitpicky details, like maybe the light up features for the eyes would have been cool. Or maybe a little spring gimmick here would have been cool. Maybe lights here would have been cool. Blast effects. But yeah, you could see I'm overdoing it. But just everything that you get already with this, this is, man, I just can't say it enough. This is a fantastic figure. So anyways, I'm going to end there and just um, say that uh, this is a great figure and uh, I do recommend this. Um, and uh, I could tell you that you won't be disappointed if you get it. So that's my review of the Masterpiece Rhinox by Takata.